So I would like to end with one last story today. A story that started 17 years ago. Back that time, I was living in Tahiti. I was quite a lucky boy. I like this part of my life. It was in 1997. And this year, a really specific climatic event took place called El Niño. El Niño is basically a warm band that go in the oceans that go across all South Pacific. And the consequence of that is what a lot of hurricanes, actually six in total. And on special day of November 2nd, 1997, an hurricane called Martin was heading to Tahiti, where I was living. As a kid, I love hurricanes because school were closed and uh, we could back home for three days and play PlayStation, so we like it a lot. And we knew it was supposed to be there between 2 and 3 in the morning. And I was really curious to see it um, to see in action. So I decided, OK, let's wake up. So I put my alarm clock at, at 2.30, and I wake up. And I went into the garden. And I see all the coconut tree moving like twigs. So she was watching. It was really impressive. I will keep this picture for my lifetime. And then I went back to bed. And after, the day after, the, um, the hurricane passed. And there was quite a lot of damages. House, some houses were destroyed, roads were blocked, some injuries, but no death so far. Why? Because we knew everything. We knew when Martin was supposed to come, we knew its trajectory, we knew its density, we knew its size. So people had time to prepare, people had time to make reserve, go to some market, stay home. People could attach the house. So population were warned about it. In 1906, a similar hurricane hit Tahiti. But this year, it killed 150 people. 150 people died this year. Why? Because by that time, there was no satellite. There was no forecasting. There was no internet. There was no way to know when this hurricane was coming. And when it was here, it was already too late. Four years, uh, four years ago, an hurricane came into the life of my father. He had what he call, we call a deep venous thrombosis. So basically, a blood clot detached and blocked one of his veins. So it's just a little ball of coagulated blood. He stayed in the hospital for one week, and fortunately, he made it. But after that, he has to do this blood test and take medication called oral anticoagulant for his lifetime. And uh, so all this process is painful. He has to go to doctors. He, he go there, he take a blood, draw blood, go back home, wait for the result, and uh, go back to the doctor, and eventually adjust his dosage of this anticoagulant. So why he has to do all these tests? So let me, on, after all, he has to do, I forget about that, all these test results into a notebook. We are in 2014. Sorry, Dad, for disclosing your medical private data. Um, so, and let me explain to you what is this coagulation cascade. It's a beautiful process. So, let's say you're cooking, you know, you use a really sharp knife, and you cut your finger. You'll bleed for maybe one, two, five minutes. But after a while, it stops. It stops, why? Because your blood coagulates and stops the bleeding. And there is one molecule in blood which is responsible for that, which is called the fibrinogen. 
So basically, the fibrin gel will turn to fibrin when you're coagulating. Quite simple. But imagine now that this process happens into your body when it flows into your heart. Let's say you co it's coagulated inside your heart. Well, you don't want that to happen. So what makes sure, so make sure that your blood is not coagulating into, into your body? Let's go back to this, to this small to, uh, reaction. Actually, it's a bit more complicated than that. There is a whole set of biochemical lockers that has to be, has, has to be unlocked to make sure that you're coagulating for the right reason, at the right time, at the right place. And exactly what my father has to do. He has to play with his lockers to make sure that he's not coagulating too fast, otherwise he will have another blood clot and reduce the formation of this of these blood clots that could kill him. But at the same time, make sure that it's not too slow, because otherwise it can't coagulate. So if it can't, it can't stop the bleeding. And that exactly what happened to him two months ago. Another hurricane came back, a small one, because he has what you call, it, it was too slow, so he had an hemorrhage. So why? Because actually he, he doesn't understand what he's putting in this notebook, into that. When we all have that in our pocket. So I'd come. And actually he doesn't understand what he's doing. It is blood tests, it's just number, it's just data, there is no information for him. So I wonder, uh, Three years ago, I said, why can't you use your smartphone not only to collect this medical data, but also to do the blood test directly, instantly at home, instead of having all this long process? And there is something that you all use 100 times a day to swipe your picture, to launch an app, it's the touch screen of your smartphone. So let me explain you how does it work. So basically, you'll, there is an electric field called capacitance, which is created at the top of your smartphone. And it's like a sea which is flowing every time. And when you will touch your touch screen, you will change the distribution of charge. It's because you're, you're made of blood, so some of the charge will be transferred and go across your body. And your smartphone can tell where the charge has been modified. And they know it knows where you swiped, where you touched, and so on. I wonder why can't you use the same approach but for doing blood tests? Well, we made, it's, we made a film, and we functionalized the film with one chemical that trigger, so that unlocks one of these lockers I showed you before. And by, uh, we have been able to, to measure the speed of this coagulation by correlating with the change of electric field, let's say capacitance, above the surface of the smartphones. So we'll be able to do the test directly instantly at home. So, yeah, just me one comment. Don't put your penis or uh, don't pee on your smartphone. It won't, it won't track any infection, trust me. Um, so my father actually could have used it. And instead of having all this painful process going to the doctor and so on, that take him maybe one or, or two days, he could do the test in his couch, and having the result instantly, and send him to his doctors. And his doctor will tell him back if uh, he has to adjust his medication dosage. And with these tools, he could have avoided the hurricane he had 
two months ago. So my last message I would like to give to you is uh, don't, don't wait for the hurricane to come into your life. And keep your health sunny. Thank you very much.